before we get into the news, make sure to subscribe to my first and second channels and hit the notification bell to stay notified of future uploads. And follow my Instagram to get notified more frequently of MMA news before it is posted on my YouTube channel, and feel free to follow my Facebook and Twitter as well. To start things off, Dana White confirms Donald Cerrone will be Conor McGregor's comeback fight opponent in January of 2020 at UFC 246 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Now leading up to this, we have had McGregor lose to Khabib at UFC 239 after his famous dolly incident where he literally threw a dolly at Khabib and his team that was residing in the bus. Also, we have heard about McGregor and sexual allegations uh, relating t uh, to women in the press coupled with him punching an old man in a bar. And now, as we have witnessed, McGregor come to Russia and announce his return date coupled with promoting his proper 12 whiskey. And shortly after, we have heard about Russians invading Conor McGregor's hotel in Russia at the Rich Carlton, coupled with reporters throwing water bottles at him in press meetings. And notably, one of the biggest questions everyone had after McGregor's announcement at the Russian press conference, which is, who is Conor McGregor's next opponent? And now we know via Dana White, it is Mr. Donald Cerrone. So in the comment sections below, let me know if you think Donald Cerrone is worthy of Conor McGregor. Do you think he is worthy of the fame and money he might potentially get if he beats Conor McGregor, similar to Khabib and similar to Nate Diaz? And to be honest, I never knew who Nate Diaz was or Khabib was until they beat Conor McGregor or their name was in the same headline of Conor McGregor in the press. So, you know, Good job to Donald Cerrone for securing this one. We have all heard um, it could have been Justin Gaethje, but you know, uh, Donald Cerrone has been in the octagon a lot. And I think personally, he deserves a good paycheck. You know, he deserves it. Next, I want to talk about Dylan Dennis wanting to all of a sudden fight Ben Askren. Now, after Ben Askren's loss to Damian Maya, as we have all witnessed at Fight Night 162, Danis would then state on his Twitter that he is the best grappler in MMA. Later, he would provoke his audience to stir up social media to possibly get the fight passed or accepted by Dana White. And here is my thing. I feel Dylan Danis just sees an opportunity or an easy paycheck just like George Masvidal, just trying to take advantage of someone who lost multiple times in the UFC. And notably, Dana White has come out and promoted Ben Askren to fight one more time and not retire yet, if any of you was wondering. One thing I want to point out in a recent interview Dana White had with uh, the show Skumo and the Pro, Dana White commented on Ben Askren. So in this interview, we're going to learn more about what Dana White thinks of Ben Askren in general, instead of um, just the rough statements I made previously. And this interview, Dana White says the fight was incredible over the weekend. And Dana White is referring to Ben Askren versus Damian Maya. Dana White goes on to say, I love the fight. Um, and this, again, is on, on the show, The Skumo and the Pro. This, this is where the interview is coming from. So Dana White goes on to say, It was a fun fight to watch. Ben brought a lot of hype. People were excited about him coming in and seeing what he could do. Dana White goes on to say, The fight with Ben Askren and Masvidal is what built Masvidal into what he is right now and going into this weekend against 
Nate Diaz without Askren, that doesn't happen. So let me see here. Dana White goes on to say, I haven't talked to him since the fight. People always think there's some kind of animosity between us and I, or between us, and I get excited if he doesn't win a fight. I like Ben Askren and what he has brought to UFC and the three fights he has been here. We'll see what's next for him. So my thing is, Dana White gets excited when Ben Askren gets head kicked in the face. Because as Dana White just said, that promoted Ben at or George Masvidal's stock and thus leading into the Nate Diaz bout, which we are all about to witness, where the surprise appearance of The Rock uh, will be taking place, where The Rock will be literally um, giving the winner the BMF bout, the belt, uh, uh, which is pretty, pretty exciting. And I recently just read that George Masvidal is honored to have The Rock and notably Trump attend this event and I did post on my social media that uh, Donald Trump was going to make a surprise appearance next I want to talk about Nate Diaz and him commenting on this trilogy fight that he has had with Conor McGregor so in a recent media scrum he again comments on his general thoughts of how the media um, framed him and where or in general what he thinks of the trilogy fight Con McGregor keeps begging for. So in this media scrum Nate Diaz says whatever is going to happen in the future is going to happen in the future. They played me like I was sitting there waiting for that fight forever but I wasn't. I would have liked it immediately, but, it, but when it wasn't immediately, when I'm going to chase you around, I don't give a, you know what I'm saying? If we're going to fight, then we're going to fight. If it's going to happen, it's going to play out how it's going to play out. So with Nate Diaz saying this, I do agree because to be honest, with Conor McGregor making noise like this. Um, we need to know if Conor McGregor can still, you know, put his money where his mouth is. Or, um, as his coach Kavanaugh is going, uh, will, you know, talk about actions are better than words. We're going to touch on that in a few. But we need to know if McGregor can come back and win. Now, if he comes back and loses, then... Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a trilogy fight. And then we need to see how Nate Diaz does in this bout against George Masvidal. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, Nate Diaz really can't, you know, set anything in stone right now because there's a lot of chips that needs to be moved into place. And I, I definitely agree with Nate Diaz in this media scrum. So next, I want to talk about John Kavanaugh, which is Conor McGregor's coach. John Kavanaugh recently commented on uh, Conor McGregor's comments uh, he made at the Russian press conference. So um, in an interview with ESPN, uh, John Kavanaugh, let me see here. He says, like Dana said, nothing is 100% until all contracts are signed. I do as far as I am aware, all parties have agreed more or less in principle there may be a few kinks to be ironed out but as far as i'm aware hopefully an, an announcement is imminent and, and this again goes back to conor mcgregor uh not really announcing his opponent um for his comeback fight but as we have heard from dana white uh we it's it's donald cerrone that's that's what we have heard so John Kavanaugh goes on to say, I'm just happy to see him back competing and is in a great mindset. We are training away, chipping away. It is 11 weeks tomorrow and ticking all the boxes. 
I can't wait for the announcement so we can have or so we can be full steam ahead. But I'm sure it is. I actually had in my head maybe during this event they are going to do an ad or something. I don't know. Maybe uh, that's coming. Uh, John Cavanaugh goes on to say, I hope so. I hope so. Actions, not words. So let's do it in 2020. I feel I've been talking about it for two years now. He is very pumped up. I like how he is talking about it being in season and has three fights in mind. First on January 18th, then April, then September. I haven't heard that type of very uh, structured talk from him in a long time. Let's do actions, not words. So again, I like how John Kavanaugh is responding to uh, Conor McGregor's comments. And hopefully, as we have all been saying, hopefully Conor McGregor's actions in his comeback fight will hold true to his words. So with John Kavanaugh giving us those dates, January, um, what was it, April and September, um, hopefully Conor McGregor would be able to follow through with those three dates he has lined up because imagine him coming back and losing in January do you really think Dana White is going to be pumped to have Conor McGregor come back in April and September Dana White is probably going to thinking or is probably going to be thinking of Conor McGregor's retirement and speaking of retirement again we talked about Ben Askren and personally I was surprised um, about Dana White's comments on Ben Askren following his loss against Damian Maia because everyone was kind of thinking oh my gosh uh, Ben Askren he's probably going to get cut even Chell Sonnen but until Chell Sonnen heard of Dana White's comments then Chell Sonnen kind of changed things around a bit and made things kind of make sense. So in the comment sections below, let me know of what you think of these stories I have brought to you. And as per usual, I'm going to look and see what stories are out there right now because those could be potential topics I talk about in future videos. And if any one of you Feel you have something to say about some of these topics I'm about to list off from BJPen.com or MMAfighting.com, MMA Junkie, whatever news outlet uh, or whatever uh, your cup of tea is. That's personally, those outlets are my cup of tea. That's where I get my stories from. But let's see here. Let's see. I'm looking at some stories right now. And then after, we are going to look at the comment section and possibly respond to some of you people because I tell you what you guys have good uh, opinions so let's see here uh, let it, what am I seeing okay we talked about John Kavanaugh uh, okay they're talking about Ben Askren retiring uh, okay Brock Lesnar beats Kane Velasquez or Kane Velasquez uh, or Kane I think he is a uh, a past UFC champion, so that's nice. And and we all know with WWE everything is fake, so I don't I really can't dive into that. Okay, Nate Diaz uh, doesn't really care about the trilogy fight. Uh, Justin Gaethje, Conor McGregor is an absolute bitch, and if he does not fight me, oh wow. Okay, I missed that story. I really miss that story. And that's from Je Justin uh, Gaethje. I think Justin Gaethje's mad that he didn't make the cut for Conor McGregor's comeback fight. So sad. Uh, I guess his name won't be out in the press as much as uh, Donald Cerrone. And he won't get a big paycheck like Donald Cerrone will get. Uh, let me see. Yes, George Masvidal reacts to Donald Trump, and um, again, George Masvidal is honored to have Donald Trump in his presence. Uh, let me see. Uh, Romero responds to Paulo Acosta. 
Okay. And then Dana White talks about the Walt Harris story. Uh, Walt Harris' daughter, our missing daughter, and talks about a 25000 reward for finding Walt Harris' daughter and all that good stuff. I even made a post on that. So that's roughly what I can see right now. So for the rest of the video, we are going to respond to the comments. So in the comment sections of my previous video or my last video, let me see. I, I see someone said highlight of McGregor Chronicles, punching old man in a pub, Angrish, angry Irish man, what a hero. Okay. And then someone gives me a link to um, um, Khabib's training partner fighting someone in the octagon just for me to uh, become more knowledgeable about Islam. Because again, just like with most of these people, I don't really know them unless their name is associated with Conor McGregor in the press or in the headlines. And someone says... A juice head bum sacrifice for McGregor would be fine if he was top five or something. But is he even ranked? And this is referring to Khabib's training partner, uh, Islam. It's laughable to even talk about this fight. Someone says, Khabib let the characterless snowflake live, yet no gratitude is shown. That's what happens when you get paid big money to lose repeatedly. Losers uh, should get nothing. You'll see a different breed of fighters emerging. Uh, not the stupid lightweight in every sense. Snowflake losers spouting off insults to men who let them live. That's a very uh, rough comment there. Um, oh, and someone gives me a, a remix to Conor McGregor's, uh, I don't know, theme song. But uh, thank you for the links. Someone says, Connor knew that he still has fans in Moscow, and that's why Connor uh, don't want to fight Khabib in uh, Arab Arabic uh, Muslim co country. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and he says, heavyweight boxing rematch, rematch, Anthony Joshua versus Ruiz will be in Saudi Arabia. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, let me see here. Uh, people are rooting for Ben Askren. Uh, let me see here. Okay, people want Khabib to fight Connor, not Khabib's training partner. People are talking about trade or Nate Diaz trilogy fight. Uh, okay, someone says give Ben Askren one more shot. They're even suggesting to give Ben Askren CM Punk. Right? We can't go wrong with that. CM Punk uh, versus Ben Askren. Uh, instead of Dylan Danis, um, I think that would be good. Ben Askren would be more likely to win that one. Uh, let me see. Someone says Islam or Khabib's training partner would whoop Conor McGregor. And Khabib will be left to pick up the leftovers, if any. Uh, the man behind Khabib, the madman, the evil genius, um, Abdul Manap. Um, let me see. I'm not surprised Conor McGregor does not want to get beat by Khabib's training partner because if he if he does, he's over. No one would take him seriously. And then uh, that's all the comments I see, roughly. Again, thank you for the uh, the links, the engagement. Thanks for filling me in. Um, and again, I do try and respond to everyone oh and thank you for the people who gave me um tips in general for my future videos i do really take the or take all that into consideration um so thank you so much for the constructive uh feedback or just feedback in general um like i said it's an honor to do all this and talk with the community so if you haven't already subscribe to my youtube channel Follow my social media, my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. As I've said before, my Instagram is where it's at. Um, currently, I'm very active on there. In Facebook, I will be active, or I, I am actually active on there right now. But I will be more active as far as videos on there in the future. My Twitter is just a platform where I can literally just go and see what the fighters are saying. So, 
Again, follow me on social media. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, both my channels, my first and second channel. In the future, I'll be doing something with the second channel. Uh, we, I talked about live streaming. I talked about posting some videos over there. Um, in the future, uh, like or dislike my video. It's whatever you feel like doing. Doesn't matter. I'm all about it. Uh, comment. Leave your feedback. I will respond to you. Um, and if you have not already, um, let me see here. Stay tuned for more.